My name is Christian Basil. Years ago, I had an idea. I got myself a TARDIS. Took it to new places, met a lot of new people, took some great pictures, and talked Doctor Who. From Krypton Radio and the creators of the Hanging With web show, this is the legend of the traveling TARDIS. Join me on my latest adventures and become part of the legend. Howdy, folks. Welcome back to The Legend of the Traveling TARDIS. My name is Christian Basil, the host of this show, and I need to, uh, to do me a favor. If you're watching this on the YouTube channel, we need you to do us a big favor. Apparently, from what I'm being told from all my friends there, a subscription is not enough. If you want to subscribe to the show, if you love this show and you love the shows on the Hanging With Web Media TV, you definitely want to subscribe right now. We do have 10,000 subscribers for the media shows, and we have a ton of content. If you there's some geekdom out there that you like, we're definitely covering for it. Um, and definitely, please, not only hit subscribe, but hit that notification bell so that when there's a new episode of any of our shows, I believe we do Saturday morning cartoons, um, lots of stuff out there please hit the subscribe and notification bell because apparently subscriptions just don't mean anything these days out there with youtube and i know they're doing a lot of changes out there but to keep up with us you can also check us out on iHeartRadio, itunes please you know just subscribe just keep up with your favorite doctor who radio show today i have a question i've been asking myself for the longest time but first of all, I want to introduce our guest today. We have, first of all, starting with the returning guest, uh, Mr. Scott Vigay. You know him better as Dr. Geek. How are you doing there, Dr. Geek? Hello, everyone. Doing great. I was hoping you would elaborate more on that, but okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, Dr. Geek. How, how have been things? We I haven't spoken to you in a couple of years. How, how are things right oh, now? Oh, things are doing pretty good. You know how it is with the, the laboratory. Everything's exploding and... Yeah, Workshop, no. se Workshop 7 is constantly on fire. Uh, <laughs> but that put aside, uh, actually, we're doing pretty good. We're, we've got a bunch of new shows coming up and uh, been working on some augmented reality, virtual reality stuff that uh, hopefully in 2020 will be uh, coming out. I'm kind of excited about that. And uh, I don't know. And, and uh, I guess finally getting to see new Doctor Who. Is that show even on the air anymore? It will uh, be. Uh, there is a rumor. Um, I, I can't say. I mean, as we're recording this show, um, I'm sure by the time we reveal it, uh, there is a rumor going around. Uh, right now we're recording on the 19th of November, this particular episode, which will uh, actually, if you're watching us, it's airing uh, the Saturday after Thanksgiving for our friends in the U.S., but there is a rumor going out there. Uh, keep an eye on the Legend of the Traveling Tars. I think the rumor's already gone out. Uh, but we think that the premiere episode is a lot closer than we think. There is a rumor going out there, and I heard that the premiere episode is a lot closer than we think out there. So, but speaking of which, people who are a lot closer, because I have no segue, I'm the worst segue in iHeartRadio history, I have the lovely, i will butcher this many times there, Mulisa Kennedy. Yes. Okay. <laughs> you Mulisa got it. I, 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 well, give me, I mean, the show's right, got three segments, so I can always screw this up at any given time there. But Miss Mulisa um, is the founder, I want to get this right, the founder and CEO at UFOCon, is that correct? Yes, yes. And you run something called UFO Hunters of America. Can you tell us a little bit about both of this, the UFO Convention and UFO Hunters of America? Absolutely. Well, we just came off our very first UFO Con event. It happened in Champions Gate on November 9th. Uh, we had the History Channel's Ancient Aliens stars Nick Pope, uh, Stephen Bassett, and oh, Kathleen God. Barton. And they were fantastic. And we just, like I said, we just got done with that event. And now we're gearing up for the next event, which is going to be April 11th and 12th, that whole entire weekend, at the Orlando International Airport at the Hyatt Regency. Okay. And this is in 2020, correct? This is yes, coming up very yes. shortly. Yes, it's still on sale on Black Friday. Oh, okay. So, uh, how long have you been doing the convention circuit? How long this have you been was actually our very first one on November 9th. 
Wow. Uh, it, yeah, uh, I actually started planning it four months ago and, and we just pulled it off and uh, we were really fortunate to have the best in the UFO community come and join us. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like I said, the next one, April 11th and 12th, uh, it's going to be even bigger and better. I mean, we just we just doubled uh, the size of the event. It was a one day event this past time. Now it's a two day event. And we are looking at bringing in the biggest stars in the UFO, alien, and paranormal community. So it's going to be cool. <laughs> it's going to be cool. And you just recently, how did the first convention go for oh, you guys? Oh, unbelievable. I'm... We sold out of the VIP tickets, completely sold out. That is uh, sweet. We almost completely sold out of the general admissions. So I, I really couldn't be happier. The Omni at Champions Gate was fantastic. Uh -huh. uh, they really did a good job you know, hosting it for us. Um, and now we're looking forward to being at the International Airport in Orlando because we will be flying in several big stars uh, from all over. And we just felt like we needed to grow a little bit bigger and we needed to have it hosted at a, at a place that, you know, we could just have our guests come in from the airlines and, and everything would just be right there in house. You're going to find this funny. The Orlando International Airport is my backyard. Ah, literally nice. behind my house literally like, <laughs> nice. like I, I actually go out there with the thingies and go okay land right here <laughs> you're helping <laughs> a little left a little left no no no, no. i oh, love it uh, okay love i'll it. see you in, that's going to spain anyway um <laughs> That's great. So, what 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 was your favorite moment about the convention this year? Oh what, my gosh! Probably what? meeting Nick Pope. Um, for those of you that don't know who Nick Pope is, he was the British UFO uh, investigator for the government. Uh -huh. And talk about a guy that knows his stuff. He was unbelievable. His disclosure uh, presentation, everything that he knows, you know, secretly and and things that he, he has found out through his research was just epic. We had Stephen Bassett. Uh, come down from Washington, D.C. He's a lobbyist for the UFO community, and he has a wealth, he's just a wealth of knowledge. And then we had Kathleen Martin, and she is the niece of Betty and Barney Hill, who uh -huh. were the very first alien abduction case ever documented by the government officially. Okay. So we had a really, yeah, we had a really cool lineup. We had some paranormal people come. That was great. I mean, I, it, it was fantastic. It really was. So you do have a mixture of people who are uh, of the UFO community. I, 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 is that even a better term to express the UFO community? Or is it, I, I don't know what to it's probably good. Yeah, yeah. It, it's okay. the UFO community. Um, you know, UFO Con, when I, when I developed this whole idea of a mega type conference, I wanted it to encompass everything with UFOs, extraterrestrials, and the paranormal, because quite frankly, it all goes together. Yeah. It, it's all the unexplained. It's all the things that, you know, we haven't really um, gotten all the answers to. But that's starting to change, and, and I'll disclose a few things tonight that I think your viewers are going to find really interesting. Okay. So, well, the question has been pondering in my mind for the longest time there, and I, I, I'm I, being a fan of Doctor Who. I've always been a fan of space. I, when I was a kid, I don't know if you two remember the not the Orlando Science Center, the John Young Science Center when it was when it was in its infancy there when it was when uh, it, when it was like what I call the bad arcade they would always have these computers and stuff like that but the kids had beaten them up so badly like out of the ten things that they had only eight were you know only two were working and then you know and then I I think I broke a couple I, I won't tell them that but I think uh, it's it it was fun it was so fun but I just remember the planetarium. And this was the original Planetarium. I mean, it wasn't the big IMAX screen thing. It was, I don't know what that thing is called, but it's in the middle of each planetarium. It's a stick like this, and it has two balls on the side, and it rotates to show the star charts. Do you remember? The, do you guys remember those things? Yeah, the projector. The projector out there. That thing used to freak me out when I was a kid, especially <laughs> at the Miami um, uh, Jack Horkheimer's place. Can't remember the Miami. Oh Planetarium. right, keep looking up. Yeah. Yeah, keep looking up. But he, I used to be my, when my parents lived in um, Miami. I used to go there, and that thing freaked me out when I was a kid too. I mean, I just could not walk up to it. It was just like I walked around it, and it was just like it's staring back at me. I can't. I. I, I can't. There. It's just really nerve wracking to look at it there. But um, one of the things I wanted to think about. I know that the Time Lords are science fiction, but could they actually possibly exist out there in the real universe? So I think one of my first questions to you guys is, and I'll start with you, Dr. Geek, I guess, do you believe there's life out there? Um, yes, uh, I believe there's life out there. There is life out there. Okay. We, were, 
we know that uh, there's more and more signs of water, and where there's water, there's most likely going to be life. If, if it's within a certain uh, distance from the, the from the star and all that, the Goldilocks zone, uh, as you were. Uh, and so the more and more evidence that we have of, of life uh, or the building blocks of life, the odds of it go up. So while we have not yet confirmed... Uh, you know, uh, remains or anything else like that, or anything that's you know waving a hand back at at us. Uh, I have. You think believe... one of the aliens would leave a Twinkie wrapper on Mars just by accident? <laughs> I, I, I have. Oops. I have to believe that with all the evidence showing that the that the building blocks of life is not an accident to just here. Uh, so and and we learn more and more about that even in our own solar system as the years go by. Uh, so I think that that's uh, very encouraging for the odds of of complex life uh, being out there. I mean, it would be very, very simple to come up with a, a, a scenario that would suggest, you know, some sort of uh, algae or, or uh, uh, coral or something along those lines. But if you if we're looking for uh, aliens like us, that's a much more complex being, And but that's not impossible based on what I, you know, see. The universe is vast and we only know a small portion of it. And what we do know hints that it's possible. Okay, you're looking at it for a science perspective, but I want to ask you a question. On a personal level, why do you think there's life out there? On a personal level? Yeah. Uh, I, I just think that if we were it, uh, you know, what are the odds of that? I mean, it just it's hard, too hard for me to get my mind around that, that this was uh, a pure, uh, you know, coincidence of, of actions and that in the vast universe, you know, we are it. I mean, how lonely is that? It's too lonely. It's too sad. No, I just, I, it's just, you know, and and you know, and and it also, I think also because it then makes it sound like we're so important to the universe, and and while I think humanity is an awesome thing, I think that that's just hubris. I think that that there's you know more life out there. I I just I feel it in my bones. So you get a feeling, a, 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 just a feeling that there's got to be life out there with yeah. an infinite number of things going on in the universe with as many planets and as many galaxies. There's got to be somebody out there futz and going and looking back out in the stars and going, hmm, I wonder if there's a blue moon out there with a Disney World. And, and not so, only that, but, but if you think about when I mentioned the Goldilocks zone earlier, I mean, we also know that life on, on Earth is a lot more resilient than... Uh, we would possibly led to believe too. I mean, there are there are uh, things living in the oceans that live off of chemosynthesis rather than photosynthesis. You know, things that would be poisonous to us, but they live just happily right there on uh, here on Earth. Right. So you know, life can come in many different shapes and forms and sizes. And uh, so I, I th- you know, I, I I would love that it, they look like us and able to have a conversation and. And I'm, and when that day comes, I hope I have the, the translation skills of Doctor Jackson from Stargate. Give me one verb, and I'll be able to conjugate it, and and you know we'll be set. And and ha- next thing you know, having uh, full on uh, negotiations for landing pads on Earth. But I mean, uh, but till that point, I mean, it just that's why it's just uh, there's not enough evidence to say that we're it. Okay. That way. So you're looking at. From the Earth's perspective, with all the teeming of life down here, there's got to be something out there as well. With the, the millions and millions of uh, of life that we have, from things from uh, you know uh, from microorganisms to every you know to big elephants, there's got to be something randomly out there that we just missed. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. And we've only been looking for such a short amount of time, and we've only been and our reach has you know been a very very short period. I mean, you know, the, the people talk about how. Oh, you know, we, we've been you know, using SETI for so long. How come we haven't picked it up? Well, I don't know if you noticed, but, you know, the, United, the Earth went digital. And so all of a sudden, the number of our radio uh, transmissions, you know, dropped down another couple of millennia. And how many radio and television signals are we going to be sending out into space like we used to? You know, we, okay. will, we will have gone dark, but our civilization hopefully will have survived it. So, you know, if the, the more advanced of a civilization that's possibly out there maybe even more quiet than us. Gotcha. Based on what we're using to detect it with. Gotcha. Well, gotcha. It sounds, uh, it sounds, it sounds reasonable, sounds plausible. But, Lulisa, I'm going to ask you that same question. But the thing is, we got to pay some bills. 
and the guys from up upstairs are not going to help us out. So we got to pay the bills from uh, our sponsors. Please uh, continue to listen to uh, the Legend of the Traveling Tardis. When we return, we're going to be asking more questions about is there life out there? And those Time Lords really do exist. When we return, please continue to become part of the legend. Alien invaders enslave Earth. Unleashing hunters into the ruined wastes. One young survivor struggles to elude their monsters clinging to hope. When he's stolen off the planet by a sarcastic starship AI, they, they pit, pit their, their uneasy alliance, alliance against, against a treacherous, treacherous galaxy. galaxy. Explore a whole new verse of barbarism and betrayal. Wonder and adventure. In the Scion series. By Michael J. Allen. Beginning with book one, Scion Conquered Earth. Available in print, ebook, and audio on Amazon.com. It's Germany, 1938. Charlotte is a 15 year old girl living in the Jewish quarter. George lives in the city proper and enamored by Charlotte's charm and grace when she wanders into his cobbler shop. George decides right then and there that he is going to marry her. Follow along as this unlikely couple struggles to stay one step ahead of the Gestapo and their dramatic escape from Nazi Germany. Good things always happen in springtime. From author Joanne Fisher on Amazon.com today. And folks, welcome back to The Legend of the Traveling Tardis. My name is Christian Basil. And I want, if you're listening to this on, on the premiere date this Saturday, we are all hoping from The Legend of the Traveling Tardis, our friend Melissa from UFO Con, and my good friend Mark Muncy, who should be here hopefully very shortly, and our friend Dr. Geek and all the team here at uh, at the, uh, the Legend of the Traveling Tardis. We're hoping you're having a safe and wonderful Thanksgiving Day weekend with your family. We're hoping you're all safe out there. Take care of yourself. For those who are celebrating, if not, we hope you're enjoying this wonderful episode about if there are the Time Lords out there in the universe. Speaking of which, Miss Melissa, I have the question for you, and I'm posing the same question to you. Why do you think personally, well, first of all, let, let me put this in twofold. Um, do you believe that UFOs and extraterrestrial life are out there? Let me, let me take out the UFOs. Do you believe extraterrestrial life is out there? And why do you personally feel that? It exists. Uh, absolutely. Uh, they do exist. And um, in the UFO community uh, for the past 70 years, you know, we have waited for that confirmation that UFOs are real. They do exist. And we actually finally got that confirmation from mm -hmm. the United States government, from the military on September 16th. They formally acknowledged that UFOs do exist. Oh, cool. It was on Fox News and CNN, and it's very interesting that it wasn't headline news, as it should have been. So you have to ask yourself, was that intentional, or was that <laughs> not intentional? <laughs> um, but UFOs do exist. The government has acknowledged it. The U.S. military has formally acknowledged it and said, yes, UFOs do exist. It was it happened on September 16th. So I can wow. say with 100% certainty, they are real, they exist, and yes, extraterrestrials are out there. Wow. On a personal level, why do you feel that they exist? Not, not just military, why do you feel that they exist out there? <clears throat> well, I think when you think of the vast universe and mm -hmm. how many millions upon millions of planets that are out there, it's really impossible to think that there aren't other intelligent life forms out there. Um, we are finding with archaeologists even are finding evidence that we have been visited by extraterrestrials in ancient past. We've looked at four to five hundred thousand year old sites that are actually showing and proving that the technology that we are finding from back then could not have it originated from Earth. So mm -hmm. if you look at just that evidence alone, that's going to help support the fact that we are not alone in this universe. Plus, I mean, we, we've just had too many eyewitness accounts. And, and when you're investigating a crime scene, yeah. eyewitness accounts are what they use. So right. you can't discredit thousands upon thousands of eyewitness accounts. I myself saw a UFO in Phoenix. Uh, it was ca called the Phoenix Lights. It happened back um, in March 13th, 1997. I lived in Phoenix. I was teaching on an Indian reservation, and I actually saw it with my own eyes. Wow. 
the uh, Phoenix Lights, uh, and it was the biggest publicly acknowledged, publicly seen UFO sighting ever. Is this something that people could look up on the internet, like YouTube or Google? Oh, absolutely. It was on the, oh, okay, cool. the news. Cool. Oh, yeah. The go- even the governor of Arizona actually acknowledged it. So, yeah, it, it's it's real. It's happening. Uh, I think a lot of things are going to start coming out in 2020. Uh, it started with September 16th with the acknowledgement from the government that, yes, UFOs do exist. And it's going to it's going to be a soft disclosure. We're going to be, you know, drip fed some information. Uh, I don't know when, but uh, there's some speculation in the UFO community as to when they're going to start saying, oh, yes, extraterrestrials do exist. Um, I will say that there has been quite a few numbers thrown around in the uh, UFO community about how many extraterrestrial species there are. Uh, at first, we said 57. Now that number's grown to 144 different species of extraterrestrials. Um, basically, they're categorized into four groups. We have what's called the grays, which is probably what most of us are used to seeing uh, or, or referring to. Um, we have what's called the Nortics. We mm-hmm. have the reptilians. And then we have the fourth category. And, and what's really interesting is... Um, the ufologists, those of us in the community, can actually categorize each of these alien species into the different categories based on their height, based on you know their their telepathic abilities, based on a lot of a lot of things uh, that's taken into consideration. But it, it's a good time to be alive right now, guys. It really is. There's going to be a lot of things happening. And you know, you can't always uh, trust that the mainstream media is going to cover everything. Right. You got to do your own research. Um, but like I said, September 16th, all the major networks covered it. So that, that was pretty cool. Wow. Now, yeah. I remember uh, watching one of these, these science shows, and I, I, I wish I had um, – I wish I, 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 I remember the guy's name or something. But there was a theory going on out there that somebody had suggested that if people – if there were aliens mm-hmm. and they're out there in the universe – and by the way, I want to introduce our other friend, Mr. Mark Muncy. Hey, Mark. Hey, gang. How are we doing? There he goes. Yeah. <laughs> Mark, I'm, I'm you look here. great. Thanks. <laughs> you never look better. <laughs> I know. I've lost so much weight with this flu bug. It's crazy. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, I will, uh, I will be taking Glenn's place shortly. He's just holding my spot as I uh, drive the I-4 dead zone and look for uh, UFOs at McDill. Oh, no, no, no. This is fine. Just leave him. <laughs> <laughs> this should be your profile picture out there there um, yeah i think I, I think he's taking over so you gotcha uh, uh, mark I'll, I'll ask you the question that i've asked our panelists over there today but uh melissa i was trying to uh, there, there was a theory out there that if aliens had existed they should we should have seen them already now we're saying now you're saying that there is proof that uh, extraterrestrial life is out there i guess the question is why haven't we seen them as of yet in full? I, we've seen them as, you know, you, as you saw the Phoenix lights. Right. But why hasn't somebody just come down and just said, hey, I'm here. We're here. We're nice people. We're not blowing you up. We, we, we want to communicate. Or is there something going there, on elsewhere that you are aware of? Right. Well, there, there's a lot more to it than just that. Okay. Um, okay. You, you have to think of the political ramifications. You have to think of the cultural the religious and the social aspects of all of this. Um, it, it's not as simple as just showing up on the front lawn of the White House. That would not be cool. <laughs> you know, images Good movie, but yeah, that'd be yeah. Like- <laughs> Right. So, I mean, there, there's a lot more that goes into this than maybe people think of. Um, and, you know, like I said, eyewitness accounts, uh, several uh, alien abductions, experiencers. I mean, there, there's been thousands and thousands of documented cases that support the fact that extraterrestrials have visited here in the past and the present. I mean, you know, that, that's, that goes without saying, but to have them just show up, I mean, you have to think, well, what would be the best scenario? And is there a reason why they haven't? Mm -hmm. And I, I believe that there is this little song and dance that's happening between the extraterrestrials and the, world powers and i think it's going to come out when everyone's ready for it to come out because if they came out today and the governments i'm going to say plural governments have not acknowledged that they're there and they find out that 
the public finds out that they've been lying to us, how's that going to play out? Probably not too good. So if, if you think about it from all the different aspects of, that would impact our daily life, this is a very complex subject matter. It's not as easy as just the, the aliens showing up saying, hey guys, what's up? <laughs> you know, it, it's very complex and how to disclose and how to actually come out with this. It, it's very, it, it's very multi-layered. Does that make sense? No, that, that makes completely sense. I, I'm, that makes complete sense. Um, Mark, uh, the question that was posed, by the way, Mark Muncy of Erie, Florida is joining us. Hi, gang. I'm sorry, sorry about, about the lateness. I'm sorry about the traffic in Tampa. <laughs> yeah, it was a nightmare. That was a nightmare. Uh, um, check out his book, Erie, Florida. And you have another book out, correct? Yeah, uh, we have Freaky Florida, the sequel. And then Creepy Florida just came out all ghosts all the time. So there you go. There. Uh, Mark, the question that was posed, um, do you... Do you believe that there are UFOs out there? And what, on a personal level, makes you believe that UFOs exist? Or, uh, uh, I'm sorry, extraterrestrial life. I want to... Oh, okay, make, I'll right, say, I'm UFOs we know exist. Uh, that's, you know, that's there's no no ifs, ands, or buts about right. that. People see unidentified things. They don't know what they are. Extraterrestrial life, <clears throat> excuse me, that is what I... That's where I have some issues um, that I also, you know, we see things in the sky, we don't know what they are. We don't, they have capabilities we cannot do. Yes, all that's true. Where they jump to, they're from another planet mm -hmm. and they're intelligent. <clears throat> Excuse me. But that's when I don't 100%, uh, I don't see that leap. There's a lot of other you know, possibilities in between. And that's the beauty of this you know, discussion is it could be, are they extra dimensional? Are they extra planar? Yeah, we're, we've suddenly got a whole new grasp of physics and we've got a whole new grasp of science in just the last 10 years that mm -hmm. has changed everything. Right. So extraterrestrial is, you know, the, the common word. And it is possible if we do live in an infinite universe. Of course, there's infinite possibilities. So there might be a planet of nothing but Nick Cage, you know, so... <laughs> Or there could be another dimension of nothing but Nick Cage, who's, you know, so. A planet of the Wicker Man. <laughs> so that's where Don't we're at. scary. <laughs> that's where we're at. Oh, just, just the stuff I could think about on that on that note there. Um, Scott, I'm thinking, um, do you think that at this moment, our friends out there who are trying to reach, or hopefully, do you think that this moment that, let me post this all to you. Do oh, you mean, think is it now actively right this minute? Yes. Yes. Right uh, now. Well, well, I'm, well, I'm going to post this question out over there. Why we you we're going on the premise that all, that UFOs exist, extraterrestrial life is out there. If it's possible, do you think they have the means to reach us right now, or yeah. have they reached us right now? I guess, you know, it, it depends on uh, a lot of different factors, but I think the mere fact that, that there are so many people who are uh, interested in this topic and who are, are are aware of it, even if they're awaiting confirmation, I think that they've already been reached. Uh, so it's a matter, you know, so if there is been an active desire to communicate beyond governments, I think that, you know, the people of Earth are aware of this phenomenon, whatever, however we try to define it. Right. Uh, so I think that that you know it, there isn't and anything and, and you know and like you said you know I've seen some theories that suggest that the UFOs you know if you say they're unidentified flying objects it doesn't necessarily mean you know what's inside <laughs> but you know there's one theory that says that maybe possibly uh, you know we uh, at some point in the future it turns out that it's us that it's actually you know traveling back in time or going doing some sort of dimensional travel and it's actually uh, uh you know just another version of us visiting us here which is not necessarily uh extraterrestrial but i mean it is still uh you know a, a, you know another theory so anything that could operate you know crafts like that have been seen in the news and, mm -hmm. and all that I, I don't think you would all of a sudden lack the ability to communicate i think you would or, or make yourself known i think that that if there are limitations, then we're starting to talk about, uh, you know, like, do they have the equivalent of the prime directive or something along those lines? As a anthropologist, you know, maybe, the, the, you know, the, the question becomes, why are they visiting? If they are, if they are from out there and visiting here, then maybe, you know, they're worried about contamination and, 
uh, exposure and all that sort of stuff about the questions that would raise by their appearance. If they're from us from the future, then there's all the questions about time travel and about, you know, interacting with the past, uh, about whether or not the, you know, the grandfather paradox exists or not, uh, you know, and, and stuff like that. So there could be a lot of different reasons why it's not so obvious. Uh, if, if it's happened, you know, it, it's, um, there was a mention earlier about archaeologists finding evidence of advanced technology or more advanced than we would expect. Mm -hmm. And that's true, and there's many reasons for that. I mean, for the mere fact that the human humanity discovered and lost flush toilets multiple times, uh, you know, we have this this great ability to lose technology as society crumbles and then have to relearn it. Uh, so, but at the same time, uh, Troy had multi-story buildings with plumbing. Uh, in, in, you know, mm. that that's uh, Pompeii did. Sorry, Pompeii did. Uh, so that's, you know, you know, that's remarkable uh, in itself. Uh, was it inspired by aliens and other technology? I don't know. There's definitely some sites that you look at that and go, how the heck did that get here? Mm -hmm. What is that about? <laughs> you know, and right. and without a, without a, a record that says, hey, this is what happened. By the way, put you know use this crystal and in or this, uh, this recording or this journal, uh, you know you just can only piece together what you've got. But the, that's the the great thing about it is that we have a archaeological record that indicates that there are these spikes in development that happen. And where are the influences from that? For you know for modern day, if something like that's happening today. Uh, you know, it, it just seems kind of weird. I mean, if, if they're, they're big, if the big uh, influence has been the streaming in, in, uh, industry, somebody is paying six ninety five a month uh, for you know <laughs> <laughs> for the whatever channel now. I mean, it's it's I, I, it seems to me that we could do better with uh, help from aliens. I would hope. Uh, it, you know, I don't know. You know, maybe it's easier to teach people how to you know make indoor plumbing and and uh, build airplanes and gliders than it is to get, you know, to the next level once you've reached a certain level of uh, uh, complacency that we have with our society today. I have to go with, like, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy thing, that maybe they're talking to us and we just don't understand, like, you know, the dolphins doing the flips and the whistles. <laughs> and it's so long and thanks for all the fish. We're getting right. blinking lights in the sky and, you know, unusual meteor showers we're not expecting, and that's them sending flares up telling us, hey, how you doing? And we just don't understand it. Yeah. And so, you know, I do have a feeling that that's, you know, we're sending out, you know, we sent out Voyager with, you know, naked pictures and some weird dots on it that hopefully is a map to us. But, you know, if somebody picks that up and they don't know what that means, you know, it's 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 pictograms, it's gibberish on a disc, you know. So it's the same thing. If we had something land in our backyard and we don't know how to read it, you know, what is it? You know, well, and if that I, happened thousands of years ago, hundreds of years ago. Well, hang on. Hang on one second, guys. I don't. I don't mean to cut you off, but we are on a hard break. When we return, I, I want to talk more about this question. And then we're going to ask the ultimate question at the end of this: Do the Time Lords exist? When we return to the legend of the Traveling Tardis, please continue to stay tuned and become part of the legend. Now on Amazon.com, I coin from author Jeremy Mosby. It's an alternate reality, and the leader of the planet iCoin is none other than Benjamin Franklin. When corrupt officials threatened not only iCoin, but the Earth as well, an unlikely chosen one, Jeremy, must face dark foes to save the Earth and iCoin alike. Author Jeremy Mosby takes readers on a superhero's adventure through this compelling and imaginative alternate universe. Get iCoin on Amazon.com today. Jackie Sonnenberg's My Soul to Keep is a ghost story rooted in the realities of actual cults. When 13-year-old Sky Monroe arrives at her new boarding school, all she can think about is death and connecting with the afterlife. Soon she discovers her school's spirituality group, the Guardians of Light, and they have a secret. They can speak with the dead, and the organization is a cult. But this isn't Sky's only problem. The campus house where Sky resides is haunted, and even the ghosts have an agenda. They intend on getting the souls they want. Filled with mystery and intrigue plucked straight from the headlines, 
Author Jackie Sonnenberg's research and attention to detail give this ghost story an even more eerie atmosphere. Find My Soul to Keep on Amazon.com today. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Legend of the Traveling TARDIS radio show on this special special question that we have here for this particular episode do the time lords really exist outside in the universe do they really exist in our universe could they exist in our universe but i have some wonderful panelists who are going to be asked, answering that question i have mr doctor sorry not mr dr scott vg hello dr geek himself i have the lovely melissa kennedy from uh the co uh, founder and ceo at ufo con and now after some little traffic shake up um mr mark muncie here of erie florida and we got to get that uh, site to site teleportation down soon yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> all righty and uh, gentlemen you were just wrapping up what you were just saying um you guys if you want to embellish a little bit more about what you were talking about earlier before we went on the break I was just saying that, you know, with infinite possibilities out there of, you know, other dimensions, other worlds, other life forms, you know, we could be being communicated with and we just don't understand it. Well, and they so also that's... communicate telepathically, too. Exactly. So keep, so... keep that in mind. I mean, just because we all speak one way doesn't mean every being in the universe mm -hmm. is the same. So that that's kind of a cool thing to think about. Yeah. And just look at animals. Uh, a whale says a whole paragraph mm -hmm. by just going or something yeah. like that. They, exactly. they, 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 they communicate that way. So um, let me go, let me go into deeper because do you think, uh, Melissa, do you think that they have found a way to get to our planet and how far do you think they've traveled to reach us? Oh, well, I mean, of course you have, you have all these different theories. You have, you mm -hmm. know, black, black holes, you have, uh, people that believe that we have alien bases in our oceans, which I think that that would be the perfect place to hide because mm -hmm. we can't even go down deep enough into the oceans to see what's there. So if I were an extraterrestrial, that's where I would hide. <laughs> I would go deep into the water and I would build this great base and I would just hang out in earth and nobody would find me. And whenever I wanted to come out of the water, I would, and I would go 20,000 miles an hour and no one would see me. And, you know, that, that would be the ultimate uh, place. And, and there's quite a few, um, quite a few cases that I, I've personally seen that state that they do believe that that's one of the bases actually on the coastline of Florida. Um, so yeah, it, it's pretty, it's a pretty interesting, uh, thing to think about if, if we do have extraterrestrial bases right here on earth, we haven't even discovered a large part of the earth. Uh, and then of course you have that, that little subject matter of Antarctica, yeah. you know, why, why is Antarctica so heavily military guarded when there's nobody living there? Yeah. Why? <laughs> That's always an interesting little. Yeah, several thing. Air Force bases from almost every country down there, and uh, and why? Why? Yeah. <laughs> you know? If you need a if you need a frozen daiquiri quick, and you don't have an ice machine, you just go down. Exactly. <laughs> down exactly. But you know, you know, you then you just have the whole time travel. I mean, there, there's just so many different possibilities. And when you're talking about superior, advanced technology beings you know, b millions and even billions years older than we are. Mm -hmm. I mean, just think of how much we've advanced in the last 50 years. Well, imagine a million years from now where we would be as the human race. So it, it's, not a, it's not a far stretch to think of civilizations that are far, far older than we are that have evolved not only their speech into telepathic uh, communication, but just think of all the time travel, the, the, the warp speed, all those wonderful things that we all love in science fiction. Is it science fiction or is it, you know, reality? And I think that's kind of the cool thing here that we're talking about. So this question is for all three of you. And um, uh, Melissa, have you seen Doctor Who? Are you a big? Doctor oh, yeah. Who fan? yeah. OK, uh, I'm particularly pointing to um, the silence. And in this particular case, do you, how much of an influence do you guys think that they've had on society since we've been uh, arguably crawling out of the ocean? How much of a push to the left and right do you think that they've been hounding? Or is that just, uh, that is that just a good story? 
Paul. I'm a fan of the movie Paul, and I like to think <laughs> that, uh, that we had one to... guy land and influence Steven Spielberg and everybody and shift everything towards that yeah. so we accept it more. Uh, you know, no, I honestly, that's uh, you know, we you go through that through history and you do see, you know, like we were discussing earlier, the influences and the leaps and the and the bounds that we make and the breakthroughs, the mm. eureka moments that we have. And yeah, it's I it's nice to think that maybe we got a helpful push or maybe it's just, you know, we got a few lucky, smart people in the right place at the right time. Um, I think it's a bit of both. I think there is some external uh, just because some of this stuff does take a leap. And from the people we've talked to, people we've interviewed for our various books, I mean, they've le- you know, they have legit experienced something. I yeah. still like I said, I can't say what it is, if it's pandimensional or interstellar or what but they've had experiences and they believe it to their core and um you know normal every day and they always do the classic i know this sounds crazy but you know <laughs> yeah. true. how many people say that it's so funny I, that that always starts <laughs> from like a to go to UFOs. it's always the same thing but they all you know but they believe it to their core and it did affect them right and that to me, says leaps and bounds that there's something out there. And I I agree with Mark. Yeah, I I 100% agree with Mark. I think it's a combination of the two. Uh, I know that we have reverse engineered some technology from crash UFOs. That's a fact. We know that's happened. But I also think, I mean, hey, we got to give humans some some credit here, too. I think, you know, obviously we've had some very intelligent people, very creative, very innovative. So, yeah, I'm going to agree with Mark on this. I'm going to say it's both. Dr. Geek, we went from be kind to rewind to I can watch adult films on this little thing on my on my uh, on my phone now. Uh, do you, you can think... do that? What's that? Oh my gosh, that's a life changer! I didn't. Know. I, I, I'll t- I'll I'll talk to you after the show. But <laughs> um, do you think that is an influence of things that have happened progressively because of an outer influence? Uh, I don't know necessarily, except. Uh, this is just a, a theory that, that I'm formulating now. Uh, you know, the, the, the idea of about telepathy came up and about uh, what would it take uh, for us to be ready? You know, because everyone's saying, you know, well, there'll be disclosure when we're ready. And everyone else usually says, but we're ready now. Why don't you think we're ready now? You know, uh, you know, I'll, I'll tell you when you're older. Right. And so it's possible that if there were a. Uh, a, a level of development necessary to truly comprehend uh, the message that's going to come forward. And maybe if telepathy was something along those lines, mm-hmm. then a shared experience, an augmented reality experience, uh, something along those lines could be, uh, uh, could be something that would be, get people used to uh, communicating and thinking the world in that way. Uh, you know, some, so just like here, where we are hanging out virtually, uh, mm-hmm. and and you know the four of us are having this conversation, uh, that is something that you know thousands of years ago would have been witchcraft, you know, you know what I mean? Right. But, it, but it's obvious, it, and our technology is going to the point where it's not not necessary for it to be a screen on my wall, but it could be projected in the glasses on my face. Uh, you know, it's not it's not about the. Um, the artificial uh, window that I have in front of me where I communicate, but now putting me in that virtual world that I share communally with uh, the people around me, which is more of a, tele- uh, a concept of telepathy. So maybe if maybe that's where the reason why our technology seems to be going that way. That's a possibility. Okay. Well, um, we got a, we've got a, a minute there. Um, well, Lisa, why? I guess... My thought process is this. Let me let me. Uh, we're breaking the segment, and I'll just leave this question open. Maybe I'll just address this to everybody. You you were saying that we were finding the right moment, the right time, and maybe even the government has an influence on when we're going to discover this moment. And it should be very shortly. But I'm thinking of the what I'm calling, for a better term, the Christopher Columbus moment, meaning that. Why hasn't it just a big ship just appeared in front of us natives and go, oh, hi, why? <laughs> He's like, um, 
I, I wasn't expecting this this morning. We were just going to go canoeing, get some fish, and you know, cook something, and and and, and just have a little campfire. But that this showed up over here, and all these guys and everything just showed up out of nowhere. And um, you know what, guys? I think we're we're going to cancel the, uh, the the kumbaya tonight. I think we're going to be busy with whatever is going on over here. And I I was thinking that what was going to happen. So I'm going to leave that question up. While we're going to a commercial, and folks, please continue to listen, stay tuned, and become part of the legend. Deborah Parmley's Jenna's Christmas Wish. Santa, if there's one thing I want for Christmas more than anything, it's someone to spend Christmas with. Someone who really wants me to be there. Head to the mountains of East Tennessee with romance author Jenna Hart for a Christmas writer's workshop. Since her mother passed after a long illness, Jenna has had one wish. She doesn't want to spend Christmas alone. Meeting Niccolo Maldini, cover model and actor, could make more than Jenna's Christmas wish come true. Unless Ember... Niccolo's ex-girlfriend does something crazy to stop them from being together. It's a mountain Christmas romance you won't want to miss in Deborah Parmley's Jenna's Christmas Wish. Now on Amazon.com. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the final segment of the Legend of the Traveling TARDIS radio show. My name is Christian Basil. I am here with Dr. Geek himself, Scott Vigay. I am here with Mark Muncie, the man of Erie, Florida. And I got to tell Mark, um, because I want to elaborate. We didn't do it on, on Halloween. But one of the things I wanted to let him know is I don't believe in ghosts. I'm with the doctor on that one. No problem. And I had to. I had to let him know. I just wanted to say this and address it because I do want to talk about it someday, uh, hopefully at a convention or even on the show, um, that people ask me, why do you go to St. Augustine to these ghost tours? And I said two things. One, and, and this is addressing me uh, to also um, uh, Melissa because I am very skeptical. That That's just the way that I am. I always question things. I always look at things. But one, I love the stories of St. Augustine. I love going on those ghost stories. The stories are far more fascinating and wonderful when you hear about how people um, unfortunately met their demise or how they are living in the afterlife here and how they interact with people. And two, I want to be proven wrong. I definitely want to be proven wrong. I, I, and there have been a couple of times that I think I've been proven wrong. Actually, um, there's that uh, one place on Goldenrod Road. Do you know what I'm talking about, Mark? I believe so. Yeah, oh, the one, Green, uh, Greenwood a, Cemetery. Greenwood where Cemetery. Was, yeah, where, where I was proven wrong. Yeah, for about a good minute. But which 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 one did you see? There is the question. I did, we did the Here. moonlight tour. We did the moonlight tour. And for those of you who don't know about the uh, Greenwood Cemetery, uh, I can I don't do know a whole episode the, on that. Yeah, yeah exactly. The, the land the, hospitals, baby lands there. There's I, exactly. But there's so I much had there. a flashlight, and on command, I said, "Okay, turn off my light," and boom, it went off. And so I yep. turn back, and this happened for a good minute. Yep. And I'm like, I, I'm like, I'm making sure I'm not shaking. In fact, I stood still for a while, and I it just happened. I'm just like, okay, maybe the battery's loose. Like, maybe there's the a chapter in a book called Creepy Florida that might have all about green green. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. Get the man the power saying. strip. He's got just a plug saying. coming. Got a plug. Sorry, sorry. So, uh, so, but so going back to the original question that yes, I had, if anybody exactly. wants to take a shot, go go for it, Mark. It sounds like you've got an answer. So which to question it. are we talking about? The 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 doctor? Are the are the time lords real? Is that where we're at? Not, not yet, not yet. I, uh, I was. Um, what was the question I just asked? <laughs> no, we went off on a tangent. We went off on a tangent. You asked about whether or not why wasn't there an a uh, oh. Christopher Columbus moment, a a yeah. day the earth stood still yeah. moment. Yeah, now, see, exactly. I, I, why, we talk why, about the why Christ- wouldn't that have been our introduction? Did we talk about when Christopher Columbus had a UFO sighting that nobody talks about in history? Because really? that happened. Yes, that happened. that's a documented case. Yeah. Uh, one of his uh, Very books, documented. a number of his sailors saw it. So. Right. So there you go. Somebody's watching him. Who's watching right. him? Right. And that's, well, you know, I mean, there's there's sightings all throughout major events in history. So that's why I tend to lead towards the, the time travel field. Because uh, if you're going to tourism in the future and you want to see something exciting, you're going to go look at the Nina and the Santa Maria and, you know, and then you're going to go look at the, 
you know, let's look at Gettysburg. Had a lot of weird stuff going on that, you know, were they launching blimps? No, there was weird stuff in the sky. You know, um, you know so a lot of things like that. So, so well, yeah, that that's my moments. I, I, I have had any others? Yeah, and I, I tend to think that the extraterrestrials that are visiting Earth, you know, they're observing us. Uh, th think of it as like a zoo, okay? They're coming and they're observing this, this race, this species, and they're wanting to see how are we evolving. But if they get too involved with us, they have now effected the progress. So I, I think there's kind of a, a, a little... Um, well, a little song and dance that has to happen here because if they intermingle with us too much, mm -hmm. they could affect our progress that's not natural. And uh, if they had any sort of ill intentions, they would have already done it. So, so I they have I will, a prime directive. Like, huh? So they do have a prime directive. Well, I mean, that's my theory. I mean, that's what I think. I, I don't think the extraterrestrials necessarily have a evil intention because if they did, I think it would have already happened. That's um, I, I really feel like the uh, higher beings really are more positive um, and they're really wanting us to figure out how not to destroy ourselves. <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. so I, I think when they do interact with us, such as uh, shutting down our nuclear weapons, that's been that's actually happened. Um, they are doing that to protect us. Think of it as, you know, they're trying to save us and trying to get us to evolve to something higher and, and really, uh, you know, not, not step on our toes, but, but maybe help protect earth and, and help protect the, the race. So that, that's just my theory, but I, I don't think so, Mark. I think when it came to Christopher Columbus, he's just going like, Hey, check him out. He's going to India. Let's, let's mess them up a little let's, bit. Let's, 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 <laughs> let's head him south a little. Let's hold him a little bit. Let's, let's no, I also, you know, up. it's, it's, you know, look at these guys. They're sailing the completely wrong direction. Uh, <laughs> but no, also, you know, we, we talk about that. It's also the, you know, the, 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 what do they call it? The, uh, the, you know, the Eureka moments and stuff like that we were discussing earlier. It's one of those, you know, how, you know, when, if they're going to, you know, if, if they are, and you know, what Stephen Hawking and Neil deGrasse Tyson both have said, if we, we, we hope we don't find aliens out there because if they are more advanced than us, they're going to treat us like Christopher Columbus treated the natives. Yeah. You know, <laughs> then that's what we're so. worried about. So, you know, that's what they were terrified about. Right. And, you know, so that's, that's why they, they were like, let's hope we don't find them until we're ready. Gotcha. So we, that gotta, we are we grown up. You know, so we're grown ups. Gotcha. We got a minute left, and now I'm asking the ultimate question. I want to start with Dr. Geek himself. Do you think the Time Lords are out there, and why? Got a minute. Okay. I got less than a minute. My answer is yes, multiverse. Uh, it's the only way you're going to figure out how to get a humanoid-looking uh, life form that has two hearts and regenerate and all the wacky things that happen in Doctor Who. Uh, then it has. Then you have to hope that the multiverse would explain it. That it, for every possible quantum outcome there's a universe out there where it's possible. Uh, so under those circumstances, absolutely. Ditto. So, so the Doctor is a Marvel character. I like this already. <laughs> so yeah, he was in, I the, love Marvel, it. He was in the Marvel comics. Could you imagine Jody Whittaker going Ness like, okay, Captain Marvel, I got this. <laughs> well, there's, I mean, you know, three instances as to why they have the Loch Ness Monster, four instances for Atlantis. That's true. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, continuity is, you know, it can only be explained yeah. by the multiverse happening, you know? Yep. Is unit 1970s or 1980s? Uh, they don't even know. Yep. Uh, Mark, what do you think? They're, they're I, I agree with 100%. It's got to be pan-dimensional, you know, trans-dimensional, and whatever you want to call it, you know, a multiverse. And if it is an infinite universe, and then there's infinite dimensions within those infinite universes, yes, there's a planet of nothing but Leela and Tom Baker running around, <laughs> and not Louise Jameson, but oh, Leela and Tom Baker running around. It's really Tom Baker, and it's really Leela just running around going, what are we doing here? And there's a whole planet of them, and I want to meet that planet. And as long as Stephen Moffat's not show running, we're all safe. So, yeah. Melissa, as our, our special guest today, um, Time Lords, are they out there? Oh, know? absolutely. I think that's a, a real possibility. I, I can totally see a multiverse. Absolutely. And you think they're just sitting? Do you really think there'll be a race of people just for the sole purpose of just watching us? And that's yes. it? They're just yeah, looking at us. It's kind yeah. of what we're doing now. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but I mean, we're making... We're making an attempt to go out there and talk to these people and try to figure out where they're coming from. I mean, we already know the master exists. He's, you know, he ran for English Parliament. There you go. 
and then and then he became Missy, and I was liking yeah. him even more. But um, oh yeah, well guys, we're at the end of the show. Melissa, thank you so much for coming on out here. Please, uh, got a, uh, just got a minute left. If you want to talk about where they can find you, social media presence wise, where can they find and follow you? Absolutely. Um, they can go to my website, the UFO woman, uh, or hashtag the UFO woman. Also, uh, UFO con it's the UFO con.com. <clears throat> if you are looking to get some tickets for our April event, um, you know, I'm on social media, you know, all of them, Twitter, all that good stuff. Gotcha. And folks, if you're, uh, if you're listening to this, we're going to have the links down below. Please, uh, keep, um, just, uh, just check out the links, click on them and please, uh, follow this wonderful, wonderful woman around and not literally i mean just don't be an actual alien trying to track her down just you know go again go over and check out i i definitely want to see the, i'm hoping i can bring the traveling tardis over in april to check it out out there um definitely want to check out eerie florida creepy florida geeky florida whatever florida it's this week there oh my goodness look at that and for those roswell, of you roswell roswell, roswell for those of you getting there. on the youtube channel you're getting a little treat there you're getting a reflection of uh, myself and Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> and Dr. Geek, where can people find you? I know on the iTunes, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Oh, yes, of course. You can find us on iTunes and on our website, brgeeklab.com. Uh, and social media, we're on Facebook and, and Twitter and all that sort of stuff. Uh, yes, so drgeeklab.com, Dr. Geek's Laboratory. He's also on the Facebook as well as we are. Ladies and gentlemen, we're out of time, and this has been a wonderful discussion. Um, I, I would love to explore this even more and definitely want to go over to UFOCon in April 2020. Check it out. Uh, that'll be all for the show, folks. And for those of you uh, who are listening to this again on the premiere day, Happy Thanksgiving to you. We hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Please be safe out there. Take care of your families. Um, Take care of yourselves because we want to want you to keep on listening and become part of the legend.